I just wrote this article about uh, a story about a student from Columbia University, Emma Sulkowitz, who is carrying a mattress around campus because she's protesting what she believes is the inaction against her perpetrator, alleged perpetrator on campus. The, the man still goes to school with her and she, she says she's fearful and she will carry this mattress until he either leaves or is expelled or she graduates. Well, I'm going to read what I wrote about that, but before I do that, there is something lately in the news uh, related, namely the double standard for men and women, um, uh, also due process. Um, I just heard, I just saw the video on MSNBC. Um, there was like a sort of a shakeup about the, uh, the NFL and some football players being punished and dropped um, by sponsors, namely Nike. And I want to say right now, Nike, drop Hope Solo. You know, someone who's good with Twitter, um, Janet Bluefield, um, someone should get this hashtag going, get hashtag going, Nike, drop Hope Solo, who admits who is facing domestic violence charges. Um, but it's funny, on this MSNBC uh, roundtable, Caddy K uh, says... She re reacted knee-jerkedly um, as soon as uh, Mr. Roland Martin mentioned that about Hope Solo and how Nike is not dropping her and what about the double standard. So Caddy carried off the bat before even thinking says, well, that was one woman against another woman. That was one woman beating another woman. That sort of sounds like shades of that's one, that's black on black crime. So not that important. <laughs> from a white woman, she should have thought twice, um, but that, that is a double standard, and um, oh, white, a woman on, woman on woman violence is not as important as the male on female violence, huh, Katie Kay? Man, that's, that's pretty elitist, that's arrogant, that's bigoted even, um, but it's the elephant in the room, it's funny, all this talk is going on, see, I really don't care, NFL, I feel sorry for you uh, football fans, uh, sports fans, really, for all these sports, where now they're going to kowtow to all the feminists. They're really going to do whatever they, what now tells them to do. You know, hire five, three people, 12 people. Tell us what to do, please. Um, these sports uh, organizations don't have any guts. They don't want us to be seen as not doing everything that women's groups tell them to do. Um, so the elephant in the room is that out of, I don't know, hundreds of broadcasts going on each day where almost all of them are ignoring the elephant in the room, a couple of times people with common sense and uh, who feel uh, just as not being done here, like Mr. Roland Martin, had to speak up. you got to speak up. You know, domestic violence, I mean, they said it right there, is becoming an, is a national problem. <laughs> Aren't men part of the nation, um, and women, don't we all do things wrong? I mean, the studies show um, domestic violence is uh, basically reciprocal. It's a 50-50 deal. It, it, it certainly is. And I'm glad people are speaking up about it. Well, here I go with my, my article. Not happy with the law? Make up your own. The story of Emma Sulkowitz carrying a mattress around Columbia University to symbolize the pain she carries because of an alleged sexual assault by a man on campus two years ago and a school's refusal to expel him helps to answer some questions many of us have been asking. Why do women earn less? Why is feminism ridiculed? Emma claims to have been raped and choked by a sometimes boyfriend one night in 2012 in her dorm room. She reported the incident seven months later to the university who eventually found the accused not responsible. In May 2014, she finally went to the police, hoping to prosecute a fellow student, whom she feared walking into on campus. Since the police investigation is gone going, and her alleged assailant is walking free on campus, she elected to create the Endurance Performance Art Piece 
called Carry That Weight as a Visual Arts Senior Thesis. From CBS New York. Rape can happen anywhere, but I was attacked in my own dorm bed, she said. For me, that place that is normally very intimate and pure was desecrated and is very fraught. The piece is about carrying the memory of that everywhere I go. From NewYorkMag.com. Sokowitz says she was impressed by how Brown students rallied behind Lena Sklove, a Brown student who publicized the name of a male student who was given a year-long suspension for sexual misconduct against her when they felt the punishment was not severe enough. The Brown Daily Herald published his name and he subsequently withdrew from the university altogether. I was recently, recently friended on Facebook by Lena Sklove, who has been such an inspiration for me. And to see the way that she was able to create a spa safe space for herself definitely made me realize that if, after I had made the police report, I had that as an option to me as well, Sulkowitz says. Okay. She's making a safe space for herself only by singling out particular men, trampling their civil rights, ridiculing them, and using vigilanteism to ostracize and slander them. This type of, of harassment is one of the worst kinds of bullying and has in the past resulted in revenge killings and suicide. So I guess if you're not content with the legal and moral avenues available to you, and you're an activist using personal experience and anecdotes to replace justice, just make up your own laws. She says carrying a mattress will build muscle and get her physically and emotionally stronger. Please, to feel safer, carry pepper spray. Don't start a witch hunt. Kangaroo, kangaroo court or lynching. You don't seem shamed or fearful. You're carrying a, a mattress for crying out loud. And you're acting more like a lynch mob than social justice warriors. Remember due process? Note to self. Don't like someone? Make them get out of your space. How? Threaten them with bathroom graffiti and feminist vigilantes. A quick quiz. 1. How to be safe on campus. A. Carry pepper spray. B. Carry a mattress. Question number 2. How to get attention on campus. A. Carry pepper spray. B. Carry a mattress. More questioning later. The Columbia Spectator published the name of the accused from rape list flyers and bathroom wall graffiti by multiple signers, spread by unnamed vigilantes sympathetic to Sulkowitz. The Spectator published the man's name because they say feminists wanted them to, oh, no, no, there was a police report, three students have accused this man, and because his name was on a rape list. I thought past history couldn't be brought up. Oh, that's right, that's for the real justice system, not kangaroo, kangaroo courts and the feminist, feminist media. Someone should put up a libeler and vigilante list with Emma's name on top. Are all Emma's radical feminists with no regard for civil rights and due process? So according to Sulkowitz and student feminist groups like No Red Tape Columbia, the, the truth is irrelevant. If they say it happened, it happened. And if any woman is uncomfortable on campus, hang, I mean, expel the man immediately. We don't know what happened. But if what she says is true, choking, slapping, and non-consensual anal sex, that's assault and rape. Definitely a police matter. She said she screamed for him to stop, something that could be verified. But the accused was found not responsible three times by the university due to lack of evidence. It would suck if it comes down to he said, she said, and it really happened. But to assume guilt, as many feminists do, women never lie about rape, would further encourage women to anonymously falsely accuse men of rape. It's not always clear cut in black and white. What other things could have happened? It's possible that when he started anal sex, she got mad but allowed it, later regretting it and calling it rape, or he may be totally innocent. It's possible, you know. 
No one heard her screaming? I guess not. Why didn't she report it immediately? And to the police. She said she was embarrassed to call authorities and when questioned by the police and was made to feel like a criminal. She said the college mishandled the case, asking ignorant questions, and left her feeling even more traumatized and unsafe. I've never felt more shoved under the rug in my life. Regardless, questions need to be asked, however painful, to find the truth. Feminists talk about the stigma attached to rape, yet fall back on that as an excuse for rape shield laws and victim-friendly rules that perpetuate the stigma. Rather than not allowing embarrassing questions, let's fight the stigma by candidly telling what happened and answering all questions confidently. From the New York Times. Another factor, college officials and students say, is that the stigma that has kept most rape victims, victims silent while still strong has eased, leading to a sharp increase in the number of attacks reported to college officials. Feminists and the mainstream media want to have it both ways. The stigma and oppression, while still strong, has eased. But of course, more work has to be done. This, despite what feminists say, there is no epidemic of rape and sexual assault. Epidemic. Epidemic. Spreading unusually quickly and extensively. Like Mike Buchanan said about everyday sexism, these are whiners and complainers who exaggerate microaggressions and wallow in victimhood and weakness. As the saying goes, go out looking for one thing and that's all you'll ever find. Robert Flaherty. Some falsely accused men are fighting back and suing their colleges for lack of due process, libel, slander, and Title IX violations of sex dis discrimination. Because feminists have taken over many of our institutions and feel a sense of invisibility, invincibility, women like Emma have no qualms about smearing someone's name and reputation despite the facts. One of the accusers of this man, there were three, claimed he forced a kiss on, her, kiss on her. Hardly rape, not even close. Yet it's lumped in with rape and written on the bathroom walls on campus. There is an investigation being made and I hope the bigots, vandals, vigilantes get sued big time. I'll let commenter Dale from NewYorkTimes.com conclude. Dale from Lenoka Harbor, New Jersey, May 3rd, 2014. It is a long-running concept in U.S. criminal law that one can only be found guilty of a crime if, if it is beyond a reasonable doubt that the accused has committed it. Now the administration wants to weaken this fundamental protection of due process and wants private entities, institutions of higher learning in this case, to serve as judicial bodies without the protections in place that criminal courts have to follow in order to protect those involved in the proceedings. This is an extremely dangerous precedent and an underhanded way to sidestep the Constitution. Someone accused of a crime, especially such a heinous crime as sexual assault, should be afforded the protections prom promulgated <clears throat> by the Constitution and other aspects of criminal law. Once the right of due process is eliminated for certain crimes, how long will it be before due process denied for people accused of other crimes. I'll just say an aside right here. How about uh, past child support? We thought deaded, desert, deaded prisons were gone. If you don't pay your child support, you go to jail. Here Dale fin finishes up here. Sexual assault should be taken seriously, of course. However, dealing with it by throwing out due process and the concept of guilty beyond reasonable doubt is the wrong way to go about it. Emma says she'll carry the mattress until she graduates in 2015, if necessary. If anyone sees her without the mattress, ask her what happened to it, and if she'd like to share yours. Wait, better not. Your name might end up on a bathroom wall. Here I have an extra credit question. Someone is attacking you in a closed elevator. Should you, A, stand there and take it like a punching bag, or B, Fight back and defend yourself. No. B. 
is only allowed against males, unless you're a female. I did put a bunch of links down in the low bar there. Um, here, this will explain it. Here's how fearful Emma is of the rape culture and how the patriarchy is ignoring women's voices. And then I have a listing of probably about nine separate stories about her women's voice not being heard.